A huge block was flying from above at Lin Kuei and Muhi. An outstanding student of the second group flew down and shouted that he was finally able to fulfill the mission given to him by Elder Yang Guo and Young Master Yang Xiao. Muhi, although he knew he was going to die, was glad that Lin Kue would do it with him. The guy just lay in the water of the spring and laughed loudly. At this time, Lin was flying down into the water towards his opponent. Ong Yi was trying to catch her husband by the hand and save him from falling. Lin held his breath in time before falling into the waters of the spring. Once under the water with his opponent, Lin discovered to his surprise that there was land under the water. At that moment, Hong Yi swam up to Lin, grabbed him from the back and lifted him up. Muhi, who saw this, angrily shouted that Lin was showing off his wife, after which he hit himself hard and screamed in unbearable pain. Lin watched all this with gloating, holding on to Hong Yi to keep from falling down again. He talked about how lucky he was with his wife, and no one helped Muhi. The girl thought that her darling was saying more and more vile words, but she did not say it out loud. Looking down, the guy said that he could not even imagine that there was a space under the spiritual source. He suggested that there might be something hidden there and asked Hong Yi if he should look around. The girl said she would do as her husband said. At that moment, the girl folded her hands, forgetting that Lin Kue was holding on to her. The guy screamed so that his beloved would not let him go, because he would fall. After that, they safely went down to Muhi's body. The ground in this place was reddish in color, and cherry trees grew in large numbers around. The guy approached his opponent and touched his pulse, stated that he had died. His wife asked him how Lin Kue felt about this. The guy replied that he didn't feel anything. As they say, don't dig another hole, you'll get into it yourself. Muhi himself was to blame for his own death. Lin Kue said that the only thing he could do was to take everything Mu HC had with him so that he could safely leave this world. Hong Yi smiled and praised such an act on the part of her new husband. In the folds of Muhi's jacket, the guy found a pocket in which there were several spiritual stones. Lin Kue was delighted with such a find and took them for himself, saying that they would no longer be useful to Muhi. Hong Yi reported that she feels that the local dark energy is quite strong and a large number of demons must have accumulated nearby. In response, Lin Kue said that if the demons are as beautiful as his wife, then it would be nice. Of course, Hong Yi was angered by such unambiguous statements from her husband and she attacked him with her fists. The girl said that this place is defined as a demonic area, the habitat of the most terrible and strongest demons, and Lin Kue has already thought of something for himself. The guy, fighting off his wife's attacks, said that he was wrong and would no longer think about other girls. His wife calmed down, and Lin Kuei at that moment thought about how furious she was. After that, the guy asked about what the demonic realm was. The girl replied that this is a sinister territory that demons have chosen and people qualify it as an extremely dangerous area. The guy noticed that Hong Yi disrespectfully called people and thought that the girl really thinks the same about her husband. But out loud, the guy only clarified that they had now invaded the house of demons. Suddenly, they heard laughter coming from somewhere in the depths of the forest. The guy asked about where this laughter came from. Ong Yi warned him that it could be dangerous in that direction and he should be careful. Suddenly, a ball rolled to the guy's feet. The ball was half red and half white, and in the middle it had a white circle with a skull. Lin Kui wondered aloud about where this ball suddenly appeared from. The guy picked it up without a second thought and began to examine it. Suddenly someone turned to Lin Kuei calling him uncle and asked him to teach them how to play football. The guy raised his head and saw two dwarf demons in front of him. They were naked, bald and scary. Their ears were pointed at the ends like those of elves and a fiery aura burned around them. They said if the guy didn't teach them how to play football, the demons would kill him. Lin Kuei was very surprised by the surprise of such a proposal and thought to himself that he did not notice where these freaks came from. This event triggered the activity of the system and three choices appeared in front of Lin Kue. The first choice gave three units of strength and implied that the guy needed to return the ball to the demons and spend time with them in a friendly way. The second choice gave five units of strength and for him it was necessary to deny the demons a game of football and make them lose their temper. And finally, the third choice gave as many as eight units of strength, but for him it was necessary to kill one of the infuriates and become the enemy of all demons. Lin Kue thought that if two Millas asked him to play football, then he simply had to be friendly with them. The guy said that he would play football with the guys, to which they happily exclaimed Hore. Lin said they needed to have a good game and picked up the ball. The guy kicked him with such force that he flew straight into the face of one of the demons. Lin Kuei was glad that he had struck out, and his wife called him a good fellow and also jumped for joy. However, it turned out that the imp could not withstand such a blow, and died. The first demon came up to him and told him that the second one was dead. He started crying and shouted to the whole neighborhood that a man had invaded them and killed the second one. 
At that moment, a bar appeared that the task was completed and Lin Kui received eight additional units of strength. The guy was overjoyed, but his wife ordered him to leave soon, because the imp calls the other demons. However, Lin Kui said that there was no need to go anywhere and everything was going according to plan. The guy said that he had almost mastered the bone, washing pill, and the fact that he was about to be beaten by a bunch of demons was a great opportunity to finish this case. He shouted, calling for more attention. Hong Yi watched this in silence. Lin Kui was attacked by several demons with clubs. One of them was the biggest and shouted that his brother had been killed. The guy said that he had killed the imp's brother and was eager to get revenge on him. One of the attacking demons asked what was wrong with Lin Kui and if he had lost his mind. The second demon replied that it didn't matter, because he had killed one of them and now the demons would kill him and cook a barbecue for dinner. A crowd of demons shouting kill, eat, revenge, attacked Lin Kui. They surrounded the guy and began to beat him. Suddenly, the demons turned their attention to Lin Kui's wife and realized that she was in league with him. They decided not to touch the girl in any way, as she stands and does not interfere and continued to beat Lin Kui. The guy, in turn, lay quietly on the ground and asked to beat him again. The demons had already begun to think that Lin Kui was completely insane and did not understand what was wrong with him. One of the demons realized that the guy had superpowers and figured out his plan, so they decided to eat Lin Kui alive. After hearing this, the guy realized that everything was not going according to his plan and something needed to be done. The girl who was watching this realized that if this continues, then her darling may die and something needs to be done. But before Hong Yi could move, a light broke through the crowd of demons. The girl assumed that Ding Kui still managed to break through. Suddenly, all the demons were scattered in different directions by the shock and energy wave from Lin Kui's scream, strength and power. A very bright yellow light emanated from him, as if from the sun. The guy's body has been very modified. He became more toned and muscular. After examining himself, he realized that he finally had an S-rank body. He urged his wife to follow her husband into battle and destroy all the demons. The girl agreed and the two of them ran to attack. Without difficulty, a couple of spouses dealt with the demons. Hong Yi congratulated her darling on the awakening of the S-rank body. The guy, in turn, was glad that all those beatings finally bore fruit. Lin Kui also said that it is impossible not to mention that the S-rank body has a higher sensitivity. Now when a guy uses the force, he can feel it, as if the heat burning him from within flows through the channels of the whole body and he is reborn from the ashes like a phoenix. The wife looked at her husband with admiration and affection and thought that he really had become stronger. Suddenly the girl felt something and became alarmed. Suddenly, a strong aura tried to bind Lin Kui. The wife took her husband by the hand and ordered him to leave, fearing that this aura of a demon above B-class could belong to the demon king. The guy was very surprised. The girl flew up holding her husband's hand. She said she would get him out of there first and then return to the spirit world. Going upstairs, the guy breathed a sigh of relief. On the ground, Teacher Tang and other students were already waiting for him. They noticed that the young man's body had changed a lot. Suddenly, the very aura of the demon began to emerge from the pit formed by the explosion. But the teacher pushed Lin Kui away from her and ordered him and Zhang Kian to leave. The guy thought that he was wondering what kind of demon this aura belonged to, that even Teacher Tang had become so serious. After the students left the place, Teacher Tang and two other teachers began to fight with the demon. Lin Kui was sitting on the sofa in his house while his wife was sweeping the floors. The guy was checking the latest academy news on the website. Apparently, the teachers did not find Muhi's body in the demonic region. The news reports only said that Teacher Tang Lin led a group and destroyed the demons, that the entrance to the spiritual spring was forbidden and active discussions were underway about its reopening, and that Muhi disappeared after the fall, the student was officially declared missing. Suddenly, the guy noticed that he had received a message from Zhang Kian. The student wrote that due to the temporary closure of the spiritual source, the academy decided to compensate the students for this loss. To do this, all participants will be given a spiritual jasper. Teacher Tan said that it should be collected as soon as possible. Lin Kui asked his wife about what spiritual jasper is. The girl replied that this is the energy core of demons, in which their spiritual power accumulates, and the core is so named because of its visual similarity to Jasper. After the demon dies, spiritual Jasper may fall out, the quality of which depends on the level of cultivation of the demon itself. Warriors after receiving spiritual Jasper can process the spiritual energy that is accumulated in it. Sometimes, motivators even get superpowers. Hearing about this, the guy was delighted. He decided that it was simply impossible to refuse such a cool thing. The guy asked his wife if she had this spiritual jasper and joked that he would like to touch her. Hong Yi called her husband a fool. 
Lin Kuei hinted that it was time for them to fulfill their marital duty, to which the girl replied that they would talk about it later. The yellow ferret, who was watching all this, grumbled that Lin and Hong do nothing but coo all day and it makes him extremely angry. He wondered why he was in the role of a dog in this house, if the cable was Lin Kue. Leaving the house, Lin Kue said goodbye to his wife and brought chicken soup to the ferret. The ferret did not believe that his master's conscience had awakened and he decided to feed him. The guy said that if the ferret hadn't warned him about Yang Jiao in advance, he probably wouldn't have returned, so this soup was a sign of gratitude to the animal. The ferret was pleased and appreciated that Lin Kue finally realized how good the ferret was. Walking to the exit, Lin Kue complained that his back was hurting for some reason today, to which the girl replied that in that case, she would give him a massage in the evening. The ferret looked at the guy after him and thought that he really wasn't like everyone else. Yang Guang did not appreciate the ferret, often beat and forced to perform tasks, but Lin Kue, though shameless in the opinion of the animal, but as a good person. Suddenly the ferret came to his senses and forced himself not to sympathize with the one who put him on a chain. In the elder's office, meanwhile, the mood was not very good. Yang so cursed and was perplexed how Lin Yu was still alive and got away with it every time, making fools of Yang So and Yang Guang. The guy asked his grandfather to send someone much stronger this time so that he would definitely get rid of Lin Kue. The grandfather replied that he was too young and it was impossible to act rashly in this matter. Grandfather was sure that in the future they would still have the opportunity to kill Ding Kue, they just had to wait. At this time, Lin Kue and Xiang Kian came to the treasury for spiritual jasper. At the entrance to it there was a guard of the treasury, whom everyone simply called the old man. The man was lying on the ground with a bottle of something in his arms and was snoring carelessly. Lin Kue joked that it would be better to call such a person Master Old Man, but Zhang Kian asked the guy to be more serious and not joke about him. At this moment, the old man opened his eyes a little and looked at the guys. Lin Kue was surprised and thought about how strange it was that the old man just looked at the guy, and a shiver went through his body and compared it to spiritual pressure. However, then Lin Kue decided that it seemed to him. The old man got up from his seat and decided that since everything was in place, they could go inside. Entering the building, they saw several gray cubes standing on the floor of the room. Zhang Kian said that these are vaults of spiritual jasper. They are extremely strong and still sealed with a spell, so it will be incredibly difficult to open them with bare hands. He also added that these cubes are used to test strength and that he managed to open one last year, but had to spend a lot of effort. The old man ordered the guys to start and reminded them that the way to open the box depends only on themselves. Lin Kuei asked his friend about the best way to open the box, to which Zhang Kian replied that brute force would help. All the students aggressively beat, threw, kicked the box in an attempt to open it. One of the guys stood and cried that he got a worthless jasper and it's not fair. Lin Kue was surprised and went to the guy, asking how strong he was that he had the strength to open the box. There were three boxes left in front of the guy and he stood and thought about which one to choose. It flashed through my mind that this situation resembles a lottery from Lin Kue's past world. Suddenly, a familiar window appeared in front of the guy with three options for the development of events. With the first option, five points of strength were given and for this it was necessary to open the box in the usual way without attracting attention. With the second option, eight units were given to the force and for him it was necessary to make a hardcore discovery, that is, simply break the box. And finally, with the third option, four units were added to the strength for which Lin Kuei had to pretend to be a good boy and ask for help in opening the box from others. After reading all the options, the guy decided that he should try and test his strength and luck at the same time. The guy hit the box with all his might and it shattered into pieces the first time. Ding Kue will receive eight more units of strength. All the students who were in the room at that moment froze in amazement and looked at the guy. Zhang Kian even joked that Lin should change his name to Lin the Destroyer, because he has such power. Someone asked Lin Kue to open another box. At this time, the old man, who was in complete shock, approached the guy and asked him to reveal the secret of how he did it. To this, the guy only replied that the old man ordered the boxes to be opened but did not say how, so Lin Kue did it with his bare hands. The old man and Zhang Kian were shocked by what they heard and saw. The guy started smashing boxes one by one in search of a good jasper, while the old man didn't even have time to stop him. The rest of the students, realizing that they would not be able to open the boxes themselves, decided to take the opportunity and take what Lin Kue left behind. The old man stopped the guy, grabbed him by the arms and asked him to follow him. They went into some other room and the door closed behind them. Entering the hall, Lin Kue saw in front of him a lot of beautiful and large stones. 
hidden floor with glass domes. The guy was very surprised and asked the old man about why he brought him here. The old man replied that he had brought him to this place so that the guy could choose a decent spiritual jasper for himself and leave those boxes to other students. In this hall there was a collection of rare spiritual jaspers. The old man said that Lin Kuei is a very strong guy and such a talent should be encouraged, so as an exception, he will allow the guy to choose one of the jaspers from the collection. Lin Kuei said that they were all beautiful and it would be difficult to choose, but he wanted to deal with it as soon as possible. Suddenly, the guy heard Hong Yi call him. She pointed at the red spiritual jasper and said it was pretty good. The girl said that this is a burning demon jasper, and although it has an F rank and little energy in it, it is quite rare and can awaken the potential of its owner, allowing him to master the fire element. And although Lin Kuei's body has already reached S rank, but the guy's abilities have not yet fully manifested and now this jasper is perfect for him. The guy took the jasper in his hands and chose it. The old man commented that the guy's lip is not stupid and although Jasper has a low rank, it develops potential well. The old man thought to himself that the guy was Yuan's son, and therefore he had a good feeling. A system window popped up in front of the guy, asking whether to absorb the spiritual energy of Jasper. The guy was surprised that the system could do even that. Lin Kuei thought that since Hong Yi and the old man praised this Jasper, it means that it is really good and agreed to absorb its energy. The energy from the Jasper passed into Lin Kuei's body, and the system said that the ability of Kai Yu has now been developed in the fiery direction, and an additional skill has also been unlocked, Flaming Spider. The guy looked at what was left of the Jasper and thought that his wife had a good eye and the Jasper turned out to be a real treasure, and even received the ability as a gift. The old man looked dumbfounded at the guy because he was able to immediately directly absorb the energy from the Jasper. Lin Kuei also noticed that under the influence of his ability, the fire element had awakened and he urgently needed to unlock the skill on his left hand. The old man watching the guy couldn't figure out where he got so many abilities from. Lin Kuei had unlocked the ability and now Kai Yu was working on his left hand too. Now the guy has become very strong. The guy was glad that he finally discovered the ability of his left hand, but only the full form of Kai Yu was not completed, which means Lin Kuei should have trained more. The old man who was watching the guy thought that he was Lin Yun's heir, and the academy could not worry about its talents, because it had a great future ahead of it. At that moment, Xiang Kian entered the room and said that Mo King Cheng's fans had come for Lin Kuei and he had better look for a back exit to escape. The guy, in turn, was delighted with such a coincidence, because he had a good opportunity to test his strength. However, Kyan stopped his friend and said that the head of the fans is Breeze, and he is the first bully of the academy, so Kwe should be careful. Lin replied that he had just received a new skill and this was the best opportunity to test it, and even if he became a punching bag, there was nothing wrong with that. A crowd of guys stood at the entrance to the building from which Lin Kuei was about to leave. They shouted at him to get out of the academy, because he was not welcome. The head of the fan team shouted for Lin Quen to come out. Someone asked him that if he didn't leave the building, was Lin a coward? But Lin left the building at the same second. He asked the guys who was the main one, calling the crowd punks. Feng aggressively asked Lin to watch his language and suggested that he had no idea who he was talking to. They asked why Lin Kuei confessed his feelings to their goddess Mo King Cheng. In response, Pereno only shouted that it was time to stop talking and ordered everyone to attack him. The leader replied that they would mix Lin with the earth and revealed his ability, Gigantopithecus. The guy moved with great speed to attack Lin Kuei. Zhang Kian, who was standing next to him, could not even see the trail because of such speed and decided that his friend would not be well. However, Lin Kuei stopped Feng's attack with just one hand, so much so that he flew several meters away. Lin took out his handkerchief and waved in front of the opponent like a bull, teasing him. Feng called his friend for help so that the two of them attacked Lin. He showed his ability, summoning a cannon and a small tank appeared behind him. The guy pointed the gun at Lin and he went on the attack. The guys wanted to fire a projectile from the cannon, but Lin Kuei created a flaming fist and hit the cannon. All the students who saw this were shocked by the huge explosion. Feng and his friend were badly beaten. They were indignant, because Lin Kuei should have had a defective ability, and just recently he asked everyone to beat him. But today everything is completely different. Feng noticed that Lin shifted the direction of the attack in order not to kill, but only to injure the guys, thereby sparing them. Lin thought that he had just accidentally missed, and would not spare this guy for everything he had done. But he only said out loud that great people do not remember the misdeeds of ants and this time he would let the guys go. But they should not forget the lesson that Lin Kuei taught them.
he told the guys not to dare to interfere with him anymore, otherwise it would be the last thing they would do before their death. The guys understood Lin's words and left. Zhang Kian hugged his friend and praised him for the work he had done. He also added that most likely the spiritual Jasper that Lin Kuei absorbed was of high rank, since he was able to awaken such a strong skill. In response to this, the guy said that it was an ordinary F-rank Jasper, and he was very weak. He should train more. The old man watching all this from the balcony of the second floor thought that teacher Tang Lin had found a good student, and this kid would be useful in the future. At this moment, the younger sister was standing outside Lin Kuei's house in the academy. Her older brother began to write very little to the girl and does not even call, so she asked her older sister to find out his address at the academy and came to visit him. Except Lin Kuei wasn't at home. The girl decided to go into the house anyway and wait for her brother inside to surprise him. The ferret heard this and realized that someone had entered the territory of the house. He shouted at the girl, Yato doesn't know her and she better get out of here. He also told her not to be surprised if he was inhospitable. Suddenly, the ferret stopped screaming and asked himself why he was protecting Lin Kuei's house, because he was a great yellow saint. The girl came up to the ferret and began stroking it saying what a cute dog. The ferret got angry and shouted that he was a great yellow saint, and not some kind of dog, and he would not look at the girl's age and hit her if necessary. Suddenly, the aura of a huge scary bear appeared behind the girl. He angrily called the ferret a dog again and asked him how he dared to snap. The ferret abruptly fell on four paws, said he was a cute dog and allowed himself to be petted. The girl started scratching the ferret by the belly and he said that he liked being scratched like that, although in fact, he felt very uncomfortable and wanted it to end as soon as possible. It was already dark. Lin Kue walked up to the house all sweaty, barely trudging with thoughts about how terribly tired he was. Approaching the house, he noticed that the door was open. The guy assumed that there was a thief at home. His wife appeared next to the guy and told him to be careful, because she feels a strong aura. The guy entered the house, but he didn't see anyone. At that moment, the girl and the ferret were hiding behind the sofa. The girl was very happy because she was going to surprise her older brother. The ferret sitting next to her thought that Lin Kue was finished, because there was a demon queen in his house and he was unlikely to cope with her. Lin Kue sat down on the sofa and began to reason out loud. It seemed strange to him that there was no one in the house. The guy thought that maybe he just forgot to close the door. Suddenly his wife called out to him and the guy turned around. At that moment, his sister jumped on him and screamed with joy. She hugged him, because she was very happy to meet him. Lin Kue gently stroked his sister's head and smiled. It was obvious from the guy that he was also very happy to see his sister. He asked CR how she got here. Lin Kue's wife, who is at this moment in the spiritual dimension, watching them. The girl turned away, folded her arms on her chest and pointedly pouted her lips. She said that her brother had completely forgotten about her and therefore, her sister decided to come to him herself. Lin Kue awkwardly scratched his head and began to justify that he had been cultivating a lot lately in order to become the strongest as soon as possible and be able to protect his little sister. Hong Yi realized that the girl standing in front of her was her husband's younger sister and calmed her jealousy. The yellow ferret watched all this and was very surprised to find out that this demon queen was Lin Kue's younger sister. After hearing excuses from her older brother, the girl hugged him again and said that since her brother had been training very hard all this time, she forgives him. The guy thanked his younger sister for understanding and added that he still wants to join the superpowers department in order to fight evil shoulder to shoulder with sister Hua and protect people. Suddenly the little sister stopped and said that she had good news for her brother. Lin looked at the girl with interest. Seer showed her brother the application for homeschooling and was happy to say that now she can live with her brother and study at home. She also added that her older sister helped her with filling out the paperwork. Lin Kue told his sister that he was very glad and she was a great fellow. But in fact, he thought that if his sister now lives with him, then his happy days with his beautiful wife will end. Approximately the same thoughts visited the yellow ferret. He decided that he could not survive this and was going to leave this house. Sister and Lin noticed this. The girl came up with the ferret, took him in her arms and asked her brother about why he did not tell her that he had bought a puppy. She showed the ferret to her brother and said that the dog was very cute and funny. Lin Kue laughed at the thought that it would not be easy for him alone to get along with his younger sister, and it would also be difficult for the ferret. The girl asked her brother if he lived alone in this house, simultaneously squeezing Zorka in his hands with such force that it became difficult for him to breathe. Seer noticed that the pulp was very clean and did not believe that the brother himself cleaned so well, because it was not like him. Lin Kue was mentally surprised and called his sister Sherlock. 
The little sister got angry and ordered Lin to answer what kind of women he takes to his house and whether they help him clean up here. Lin Kue raised his hands and said that he was really cultivating and he wouldn't have had enough time for such entertainment. The girl exhaled with relief and her mood changed to calm, but she added that all girls are treacherous, unlike her, so her brother should stay away from them. Lin Kue bowed and agreed with his sister. The ferret thought that in fact this demon queen is the most insidious girl in the world and it is necessary to stay away from her. Lin Kue didn't know what to do, because now he would probably have to secretly meet with Hong Yi. His wife smiled at that moment and thought that Lin's sister was quite interesting. The girl began to cook breakfast while humming something under her nose. What was on the table looked not at all appetizing and not even edible. The guy thought that his sister probably wants to poison him. Suddenly, Si Er turned to the table from the stove and shouted at Lin Kue why he wasn't eating the food she had prepared. The guy hesitated and began to think of what to answer. As a result, he asked his sister if it was edible at all. The girl happily replied that it was edible and pointed to the ferret, which, according to her, ate and sleeps. The guy looked at the animal and realized that it was at least poisoned. My sister strongly recommended that my brother eat what she cooked before the food got cold. The guy started eating the soup with both cheeks and saying that it was very tasty. Suddenly, the guy realized that the food cooked by Sierra really tasted very tasty. The taste reminded him of feeling like he was underwater surrounded by mermaids. The girl asked Lin Kue if it was delicious for him, to which he sincerely replied that he liked everything and it was very tasty. The ferret watching this thought that it was no wonder that the demon king was able to eat the demon queen's cooking. Lin Kue came out of the house whistling to himself. He decided that since there were no classes at the academy today, then he should find a part-time job. At first he only had to support his wife and dog, and now he also has a seer, and his wallet is completely empty. The guy thought that he could not just approach his sister and ask her for money, because the maintenance of the family rests on the shoulders of a man and children should not go through this. At this time, Zhang Kian walked past Lin Kui and asked him about what he was doing. The guy asked his friend about where he was going to go with an axe to the advantage. Is it really for firewood? Zhang replied that he was going to work part-time, because there were no classes today anyway. Lin Kua immediately perked up and began to persuade his friend to take him with him. Zhang decided that Lin would not get rid of him so easily anyway, so he decided to take him with him. The guy also added that Lin was incredibly lucky, because they just lack one person and he can ask to take Kui into the squad. Lin was very happy with this news and even jumped for joy. After some time, the guys found themselves in the Hall of Mercenaries. Lin Kue reproached his friend for not telling him that he was working as a mercenary. Although Lin Kue was aware of the existence of the mercenary union, he had never been interested in it. And today he was even lucky enough to visit this place personally, and there are a lot of people here. In each city there are representative offices of the Union of Mercenaries, which are also called earnings houses in another way. Every day, tasks are posted on the bulletin board from the Department of Superpowers and from various law enforcement agencies in the Central Hall. Although the rewards are different, they all deserve attention. At that moment, the guys came up to this very board. Zhang Kian said that the students of the academy have a lot of free time and the teachers themselves do not mind that the students join the mercenary units. Sometimes even the academy itself acts as a proxy in order to help students find a job. Suddenly Zhang Kian noticed that Lin Kue had already popped some kind of ad. It offered a reward of 50 million spiritual stones, which was very much. The guy was glad that he would need to complete only a few tasks, and he would become a millionaire for a few months and be able to forget about financial problems. The people in the hall looked at Lin Kue reproachfully. The guy has already begun to dream that after he gets rich, he will be able to go all out and Hong Yi will definitely kill him. The girl reproached the guy that he was thinking about something terrible again. Zhang Kian called his friend and he ran up to him. The guy said that he could only recommend Lin Kue, but whether he would join or not depends on how well he would show himself. Zhang introduced Lin to their team called Hubby. In front of the entrance to the team room there was a crowd of people with posters with the name of the team. Lin Kue concluded that the team is popular because it even has fans. Having made their way through this crowd, the guys got inside. Zhang Kian introduced Lin Kue to his boss and said they were studying together. Pereno also added that his friend is an outstanding freshman of this year and wants to join their team. There was also a girl with pink hair in the room and a young guy with blue hair. Everyone looked at Lin Kue with a searching gaze. Lin awkwardly scratched his head and said he was glad to meet you. The boss held out his hand to Lin and said that his name was Chu Lai and he was the head of the hubby squad. There were six people in the room, Lin Kue, Zhang Kian, Chu Lai, a girl with pink hair, a guy with blue hair and another guy in a cap. 
Lin Kuei shook hands with the boss and said that he had heard about the squad, so he decided to join them. The head of the squad began to shake the guy's hand very hard and say that they are always happy to see outstanding students of the Kanglin Academy, and shared his thoughts that it seems to him that Lin is not a blunder and will show himself well. Lin was very hurt by the handshake, but he didn't show it. Xiang Kian added that Lin belongs to the attacking class and even received a fire-type ability a few days ago which makes him an ideal candidate for the missing squad member. After hearing the information, the boss thought for a while and decided that Lin Kui should pass the ability rank test. He held up some kind of blue blue ball in front of him. This device reminded Lin of the one he had at school when teachers measured the rank of people. Lin touched the device and decided that now he would find out how much progress he had made. The device showed that Ding Kui had reached the C-plus rank. Zhang Kian praised his friend, because when he entered, he only had the rank of FFF. The boss thought that an attacker of C-plus rank is pretty good and maybe something useful will come out of it. The boss said that Lin Kui suits them and now he is a member of the squad. The guy thanked the head of Chu Lai and said that with him the hubby squad would reach unprecedented heights, and they would become the best. The guy thought to himself that it was pretty easy to do and he thought that the test would be more difficult. The guy with blue hair snorted disdainfully and warned Lin not to fall into the mud. At this moment, fans and female fans crowded around him, looking at him with admiration. The man added that young people are often unrestrained in their words, but they lack experience and not every tramp can become a mercenary. Lin began to look at the man's face and realized that it was familiar to him, but he could not figure out where he had seen it. And although he was far from Lin, the guy admitted that this man was also handsome. The boss laughed and said that since Lin Kue was now in their squad, they needed to introduce themselves. A cheerful girl with pink hair introduced herself to Keek and said she was a hiller. The guy in the cap, dressed all in black and gray, introduced himself by the name of Yuzhu and said that he was responsible for long-range attacks. Both members of the squad greeted Lin Kue, while the guy with blue hair did not even move from his place. The boss came up to him and picked him up from the sofa by the arm and said that his name was Mo Ziu, and he was the deputy boss, and also Mo King Chang's older brother. Lin realized that the girl's older brother was exactly aware of the case with the confession and he was finished. Mo Zhu realized that Lin had not expected such a meeting and reminded him that every road is narrow for enemies. Lin jokingly called Zhu his brother-in-law and asked him not to be angry, because he is ready to take responsibility for what happened. Mo Zhu was enraged that Lin called him his brother-in-law, and started shouting that only he was worthy to be with his sister. Only he could watch her wash, because he and King Cheng have true love. Everyone in the room looked at Mo Zhu questioningly and with surprise. Even the fans were shocked by what they heard. The guy quickly began to justify that he meant something completely different. He protects his sister because all men are goats, except for him. Lin looked at Mo and realized that he was a pervert with a little sister complex. Suddenly, Mo Zhu yelled that if Lin wanted to join their squad, he would have to defeat him first. He offered him a one-on-one -on -one fight and if Lin Kue wins, he will finally be accepted into the squad. Zhang Kian warned his friend that Mo Zhu is a B-rank and should not be underestimated. Suddenly, a selection window from the system appeared in front of Lin. The first option gave five additional dexterity points for which it was necessary to apologize to Mo Ziu. The second option gave five additional strength points and a blue-haired guy had to be taught a lesson for him. The third option gave five additional soul points and for him it was necessary to convince others of his rightness by loudly announcing refusal. Lin thought that he already had enough units of strength and there were no problems with his soul, so it would be most rational to choose dexterity now. Mo Zhu, still angry, asked Lin why he was standing rooted to the spot. Lin bowed deeply and apologized to Mo Zhu. He said that he would not dare to even approach his sister Mo King Cheng anymore, because only a brother is worthy of her. Mo Zhu thought that the guy was dumbfounded from fear of him and therefore decided to apologize. Lin asked the deputy if he would forgive him and made a pleading face. Mo Zhu said that since he was asking like that, then he would show mercy and forgive the guy. After that, the system gave out a window that Lin would receive five additional mercy points. After that, Lin stood up and gave Mo Zhu a good punch. The boss and Xiang Kian were very surprised and scared for the guy. Mo Zhu flew into the wall. Lin Kue realized that his agility had greatly increased, but this is not surprising, because the system rewarded him. Mo Zhu cursed and said that Lin had acted very meanly by hitting him surreptitiously. Mo Zhu thought that the blow was of a completely different rank and it could not be that Lin was at the level of S. Yuzhu asked the guy if he was okay. Lin announced that he won and now he is in the team, because if Mo Zhu is a real man, then he must keep his word. Mo Zhu shouted that this was not all and he was ready to fight on. 
but the boss interrupted him and asked him to stop making noise. Mo Zhu wanted to argue with the head, but Chu Lai replied that the squad still had things to do and personal showdowns could be left for later. The guy asked the head if his decision was such that Lin joined the squad, pointing his finger at him. At that moment, Lin Kuo was talking to a crowd of female fans and bragging that he had just beaten Mo Zhu and the girls had better be his fans. The wife who was watching this said that she would talk about it with her husband at home. Mozu was angry that he relaxed and missed a blow from Lin Kuei. Heek, in defense of the guy, said that she thinks Lin Kuei is pretty cute, and Xiang Kian added that he is not perfect, but the members of the squad will quickly get used to him. The boss shouted that it was time for the squad to move out, because a task was waiting for them. Lin Kuei began to molest Mo Zhu by mimicking his sister, to which he told him to back off. Mo Zhu thought that Lin Kuei was an infuriating guy, but he was quite stronger with rank, which made him uneasy. He realized that he had underestimated Lin Kuei and he should be more careful next time. Not so long ago, a group of seven young people decided to explore an abandoned estate in the western part of the suburb. It would seem a dilapidated, dark and frightening estate, but who would have thought that they would stay there forever? That's how the boss began his speech, standing in front of a huge estate. It was a kind of joke about how it was written in the assignment. Lin thought that his head didn't have a very good sense of humor. The boss reported that according to the Department of Superpowers, a couple of E-rank cannibal ghosts live in this estate. The task of the squad is to either exercise the ghosts or rescue the missing. The boss ordered Mo Zhu to distribute the communication devices to all the squad members. Lin thought about how he could kill the E-rank cannibal ghosts with one blow. While handing out the devices, Mo Zhu wished Lin to survive, but it was clear from his look that he was not serious. Lin Kue realized that Mo Zhu was vindictive. Entering the mansion, the boss asked everyone to be in touch and said that they were starting to complete the task. Lin Kue was to inspect the corridor, Zhang Kian was in charge of the basement, Keek and Chu Lai would inspect the dining room, and Mo Zhu was acting at his discretion. While in the corridor, Lin Kue thought that it was hot outside, but it was very cold in the mansion. The guy started to talk out loud about how he felt a spiritual pressure similar to what was in the demonic realm, but it wasn't so cold there. Lin Kue was sure that there were a lot of ghosts in this corridor. Hong Yi praised her husband's reasoning and told him that he had made good progress. She confirmed that the feelings do not let the guy down and the information was incorrect, because in this mansion there are not ghosts of E rank, but spirits of a D and C rank. Lin Kue was surprised that the information of the superpowers department turned out to be incorrect. But Hong Yi replied that the spirits must be good at disguising since they were not noticed earlier, and urged her husband to be careful. Suddenly, Lin Kue heard the sounds of dripping water, and was surprised that it was raining in the mansion. The guy began to move deeper into the dark corridor towards the sound. Suddenly the guy stopped and abruptly realized that something was wrong. He had a vivid feeling that someone was watching him. At this time, two demons were watching him from the ceiling. They were somewhat similar to girls and pulled their long tongues towards Lin Kue's head. Their bodies were on the ceiling, but their necks curved and changed in length so much that they were very close to Lin Kue from the head. The girls surrounded the guy from both sides and began to whisper pleasant things into his ears. The guy turned out to be quite excited. In the dark, he couldn't see how scary the two girls really were. They wrapped their arms around his body and touched Lin's torso. At this time, Lin Kue's wife appeared and shouted that she would deal with them herself. The guy stopped her and asked her to let him enjoy this pleasant torture. Hong Yi was very surprised by this and didn't even know what to say. The girls, in turn, were glad to hear this and asked Lin Kuei about which of the two of them he liked better. Suddenly, a system window with elections popped up in front of the guy. The first choice gave five additional points to charm and for him it was necessary to choose the left. The second choice gave five additional points of strength and for him it was necessary to choose the right. And for the third choice they gave ten additional points of dexterity, and for him it was necessary to choose both. The guy thought that the third choice is the most optimal, because it gives the most points. He mentally apologized to his wife for what he was going to do, because there was no other way out. The guy said that he liked both girls and joked that the light should be turned off, because they would no longer need it. The girls smiled and called the guy a vulgar. Hong Yi got angry and said that she would kick her hubby at home for such words. After that, a system window appeared stating that Lin Kue had received 10 dexterity points. The guy asked for forgiveness and said that he had changed his mind and wanted to act like a real man. He said that he is not one of those who sleeps with just anyone and his heart belongs to only one. With these words, he grabbed the girls by the shoulders and threw them away from him with all his strength. The girls crashed into the wall. Lin Kue shouted that his wife could be calm, because her husband only loves her and he is loyal and well-mannered. 
The wife was a little saddened by the fact that Lin understands less and less, while the guy thought that he was lucky to figure out how to get out in time. Otherwise he would have flown in at home. Suddenly, the guy heard a voice outraged that Lin Kue already has someone and he deceived them. The guy turned around at the sound and was surprised that the girls were still alive. One of them told her sister that the guy was a liar, and Lin Kue was sure that he hit the girls against the wall with all his strength, and they should have been dead by now. The sister got angry, her eyes turned black and she said that Lin Kue would pay for his deception. After that, the girl called all her lovers and ordered them to attack Lin. Faceless demons began to crawl out of the ground in large numbers and crawl towards Lin. The guy was surprised and did not understand who they were and from where. Hong Yi said that they urgently need to run, because other team members are nearby, and may notice the girl, and she can't let herself be discovered. The husband and wife ran as fast as they could, and the sisters ordered their suitors to grab them. Hong Yi said that these demons must be the men who fell for the charm of these sisters. Based on the number of men, Lin concluded that more people died in this place than was indicated in the task and wondered how many people actually died in this place. At this time, the rest of the participants of the hubby gathered in the dining room. The boss asked Mo Zhu if he had found anything, to which he replied that he had not found any traces of ghosts in this building and it was empty. Yu Zhu told the boss that the temperature in the rooms is much lower than it should be and there are clearly ghosts here, but they must be hiding. The boss said he agreed with his ward and asked the others if they had seen Lin Kue. Zhang Kian asked if his friend had been with them and said he thought he had been back for a long time. Heek said that a strange sound was coming from the side of the corridor. At that moment, Lin Kue flew into the dining room and shouted that they needed to run urgently. The boss stopped Lin and asked what kind of demons they were. Two sisters flew at the head of all the creatures and shouted after Lin that he was a deceiver. Everyone was shocked to realize that an army of demons was running at them and asked Lin Kue about why he brought them to the dining room. The guy said it was an accident and he didn't know how many there really were. Zhang Kian cursed. One of the sisters shouted in the direction of Lin that he was a liar and it would not help him to hide behind the backs of his friends. As she shouted this, a thick green liquid flew out of her mouth. This liquid smelled terrible and eventually got on Keek's clothes. From this, her t-shirt was corroded and it tore. Lin Kui rejoiced at this coincidence. As a result, it fell on both the boss and Xiang Kian, and they were also left without clothes. Lin Kui decided that it would be better if he didn't see it and wants to forget it. The head shouted that now is not the time to be embarrassed and regardless of who the enemy is, they will not be afraid and will bravely meet the enemy face to face. At this time, a phoenix bird appeared nearby. The head of the hubby, Yuzhu and Mo Zhu ran to the army of demons and began to fight with them. The fiery phoenix attacked one of the sisters and began to tear her clothes, and Kian Zion captured the second sister and said that it was better for her not to dig. Peek said that she would also fight, despite the fact that her breasts were bare. Hong Yi asked her husband to throw something on her. Lin, as usual, decided to look at the girl a little more and only then throw something on her. Hong Yi said that she would quickly bring him to his senses and with the help of her power, she began to control Lin Kue's body so that he threw a white jacket on Keek. He told Keek to be careful, in turn, the girl thanked the guy. The girl caught herself thinking that she did not think that Lin was actually such a gentleman and for some reason her heart was beating strongly. The guy ran to the demons to help the rest of the team members fight them. Half an hour later, both demonesses were defeated and tied up. Although they are of low rank, they can summon and control minions, so it took a lot of effort to defeat them. Most likely, the seven missing schoolchildren also became one of those dead. Zhang Kian said he would report everything to the people from the superpowers department. The guy approached one of the sisters and said that if the girls wanted to contact him, he would give his phone number. But before he could finish, one of the sisters shouted that all the men were bastards. Lin Kue thought that he had relaxed too much today and never realized if his wife could really control Lin's body. Peek approached the guy and said that she would return his clothes after washing them. She kissed Lin on the cheek in gratitude. Zhang Kian joked with his friend that he did not give him clothes and called Lin Casanova. Lin said he would definitely share his clothes with a friend next time and asked him about why he didn't use his powers. In response to this, Zhang Kian replied that he was a summoner, and this situation was not quite suitable for his powers. But next time Lin would be able to personally see how his friend uses his powers. Mo Zhu angrily began to scold Lin Kue again and asked him if he really thinks that he is the coolest. Lin thought that Hong Yi had forced Keek to hand over the clothes herself, but in the end everything went wrong and he would have to apologize. At that moment, the boss came and said that news had come from the Department of Superpowers. Due to an error in the information, the complexity of the task was increased, so in addition to the main reward, 
The team will also be compensated, about 30,000 each. Lin was very pleased with such a fee and realized that he had discovered a gold mine for himself. Zhang Kian looked at his friend rejoicing at such pennies and said that he was really pathetic. Lin Kuo shouted that he was rich now and would have meat for dinner today. The boss said that the employees of the superpowers department are already on their way to the mansion. They will collect all the information and take the two demoness sisters, and after that all the team members will be able to disperse. Two employees from the Night Watch met with the hubby squad at the entrance to the mansion. They approached the demonesses and said that they were at the D rank and close to the initial stage of the level, and also praised the squad members for their work. Lin Kuo was very surprised that the demonesses had such a low rank. He remembered the entrance exams and the biker who was only at the B rank. He thought it was hard for him to imagine how strong a real demon of level B Lin wondered who caught the demon and even weakened it for the entrance exam. One of the employees approached the car and asked Miss Hua if it was worth transporting these demons now. She answered positively. Lin Kue heard this conversation and thought that maybe his sister was sitting in the car. When he got closer to the car, he realized that his sister was really sitting there. The girl got out of the car and asked about the fate of her brother brought there. The boss asked Zhang Kian about why he didn't tell him that Lin Kue's older sister works in the Night Watch, to which the guy replied that he had just found out about it himself. Lin Hua asked her brother about how he decided to join the mercenaries. Lin Kue replied that all this was done for the sake of Seer, and he thought it would be nice to find a side job. After receiving this answer, the sister calmed down and said that she had to go, because she had things to do, but Lin stopped her. The guy said that not so long ago he learned about the military merits of his father and decided to become the same as him. Lin Kuei asked the girl to tell him about how to join the Night Watch, because he wants to become stronger. Lin Hu replied that the guy didn't have enough abilities yet. Even if he entered the Kanglin Academy, this is only the beginning of the path, then many more trials await him. The girl told Lin to go back to the Academy and study hard, as well as take care of Seer. In the end, she added that the Night Watch is not a place that is recruited only because of wishlist. Lin Kue replied that he understood his sister. The guy thought that apparently, in the eyes of masters like Sister Hua, the academy is a kind of village of beginners and Lin still has a long thorny path ahead. The sister, seeing her brother's upset face, patted him on the shoulder and reassured him that all her words did not mean that he had no chance at all. Soon, the Night Watch together with the Kanglin Academy will hold autumn tests. If Lin Kue takes the first place in these trials, then it will undoubtedly be a good contribution to the future, and someday the girl will tell her brother about her father. Suddenly, the girl shouted by the way, catch it, and threw a wooden cube towards Lin Kue. The guy caught it and was delighted with the gift from his sister. He waved happily after his sister, thanked her for the information and said that he would do everything that depended on him. Lin Hua wished him luck and left. Leaving, the girl thought that her brother had changed a lot. Zhang Kian summarized that their business in this place is finally over and they can disperse. The guy teased his friend that he was from a family of heroes, but Lin asked him to stop saying that. Because it was the merits of his family members, not Lin himself, and he was still far away from them. At that moment, Mo Ziu thought that when he returned home, he should inform his sister about the status of the Lin Kue family so that she would not be fooled by him. When Lin Kue came home, she was met by her younger sister, who was very happy about her brother's return. She was holding a yellow ferret dressed in a pink dress. The girl asked her brother about the animal's outfit. The guy laughed and called the ferret a yellow princess. The ferret was thinking at that moment that he was the great Zhang Huang. Lin Kue took out a wooden box from his pocket and showed it to see her, saying that he had met his sister today and she had given him something. The younger sister said that it was unfair, because the older sister did not give her anything. Lin Kue patted his sister on the head and told her not to be angry, because next time the brother will definitely bring something for Seer. The girl clicked her tongue and said that she forgives her brother. Lin finally decided to open the box to see what was inside. He found a yellow spiritual jasper in the box. The guy and I can't think that his sister will give him such an expensive thing. Seer told Lin to try to absorb the jasper energy as soon as possible. As soon as the guy picked up the jasper, a system window appeared in front of him, saying that an rank spiritual jasper had been discovered. The system asked the guy whether to absorb the energy from the stone. Lin answered positively. The guy sat down on the sofa and began to absorb energy. The younger sister watched this with surprise, because only great masters can directly absorb energy and her older brother was doing it right now in front of her eyes. The ferret who was watching this thought about who the elder sister Lin Kue was, who gave him a high rank spiritual jasper just like that. Looking at her brother, Sierra thought that he really became stronger and even changed a little, now he's like a different person. 
The ferret also thought about the fact that there are only demons in the Lin family. A system window appeared in front of Kue that the energy was absorbed and the additional skill absolute protection was unlocked. Lin let out a sigh of relief and said that he did not think that the absorption would take so long. Although Lin will not receive a new attribute of the ability Kaiyu, but he has a good ability. Now Lin can completely cover his body with energy and turn it into a protective layer, absolute protection. The guy thought that with his s rank body and a new ability, he could stand alone against a warrior with a rank higher than see the gift of his sister helped the guy a lot. The younger sister congratulated her brother, and he patted her on the head. Lin Kue said that it was all thanks to the help of his elder sister and he would do everything not to let her down. The guy thought that he still needed to take care of Seer, because he couldn't let anything happen to her. Hong Yi, who was watching all this, thought that seeing how her darling was developing rapidly, she simply could not take offense at him and decided that she would forgive the guy this time. The next day, Lin was sitting in class at the academy. Teacher Tang announced that the theory was over for today, and the lesson was over. Lin immediately ran up to her and informed her that he wanted to take part in the autumn test. The teacher was surprised that the guy already knows about the test. She said that even if the guy didn't have the desire, she would still put his name on the list of candidates. Teacher Tang said that if Lin Kue has time, they can do emergency training, because he has a special position. The guy agreed. Suddenly, Xiang Kian and another disciple Tang came up to Lin and said that together, they would be able to give their all for the test. Suddenly one of the girls got up from her seat and shouted at Lin, ordering him to get out of the classroom. The guy noticed that Mo King Cheng was standing next to her, and the second girl was with her at the spring. Lin Kui assumed that they had come to take revenge on him. Lin also thought that Mo King Cheng is quite a beauty and it is not surprising that Mo Zhu has a little sister complex. Lin shouted that the girls had made a mistake and his name was Xiang Kian, but that guy was Lin Kui. Xiang Kian didn't understand why Lin was giving him such a dirty trick. The girl snorted and said she remembered Lin's face. She took out a lasso and threw it towards the guy shouting die. Lin Kui has established his absolute protection. The lasso touched the shield and fell. The girl was surprised, because she put 90% of her strength into the attack, and there was not a scratch on Lina. Lin Kui started shouting obscene things out loud to further anger the girl who attacked him. The girl said that she would still remember it to Lin. Suddenly Su Tang intervened in the dispute and stopped Tan Yu, saying that she was already overreacting. Lin Kue was very surprised that the girl intervened. Su Tang said that although Lin Kue was begging for punches again, he was still part of their group and she wouldn't let him be bullied just like that. To this, the girl replied that such a little thing as Su Tan could not do anything to her. Everyone standing in the audience was surprised by the fight between the two girls. No one understood why they were so much at odds. While one girl was throwing another through the window, and the second was trying to drive her into the wall. At this time, Mo King Cheng stood and thought about how her friend was unrestrained, because they came to the audience for Lin Kue, and she started fighting with Su Tang. Zhang Kian told Lin that the girl is sworn enemies since the first year and the girls just can't stand each other. Su Tan hates it when someone breaks into her class and causes problems, so she got in. Lin heard all this and started supporting Su Tang like a cheerleader at a football match. Zhang Kian watched this with shame and did not understand how Lin Kue even lived to see this day. The fight between the two girls continued while Lin Kue supported Su Tang. Suddenly, a dark figure appeared between the girls. It was a guy in a black robe, and there was a black aura hovering around him. He laughed and called Su Tang and Tian Yu kids who are having fun and said that uncle wants to join. Lin Kue stopped and asked in surprise about who it was. Hong Yi asked her husband to be careful, as she felt that he was a man in a robe blowing a demonic aura. Both girls indignantly asked the guy about who he was. He shouted in response that he was a ghost in the dark and murder was his only abode. At the same time, the man was laughing and it all looked like he had gone crazy. Suddenly Mo King Cheng asked the guy if he was from the afterlife abyss. It was the first time Lin Kui had heard this name. Zhang Kian quickly realized that this was the strongest demonic force and he needed to find teacher Tang Ding as soon as possible. The man in the robe came very close to Mo King Cheng and said that her guesses were correct and he was from the abyss beyond the grave. The man was also surprised by the girl's good awareness, given the fact that she is from the Mo family. All three girls noted with horror how fast the man was moving. Suddenly, he released something resembling a purple tentacle from his hand. It wrapped around Mo King Cheng so that the girl could not move. The robed guy laughed and said that today his target is Mo King Cheng, since the Mo family's blood power is too attractive. Suddenly, Tian Yu jumped on the man from behind, shouting for him to take his hands off King Cheng. The girl shouted that he would only take Mo King Cheng over her dead body. 
from the attack. The man loosened his grip and King Cheng fell to the ground. The man was surprised that Tian Yu managed to hurt him. He said that the girl was not bad and ordered her to follow him so that she would now be his servant. The girl was very angry with these words. Lin Kui suddenly jumped into the conversation. He raised his hand when he was in class and said that he had a question. What is the afterlife abyss? The three girls stood in disbelief while the man in the robe was angered by this question. He called Lin Kui an ignoramus, reproaching him for not knowing such simple things. Su Tan approached the guy and explained that the afterlife abyss is a powerful demonic organization. Some of its members are fallen human beings. Most of them are people who are ready to help demons for the sake of strength. They have no predisposition to awakening. They sell their soul for the opportunity to take revenge on this world. Simply put, the afterlife abyss is a place of garbage collection, a rabble that is incapable of anything from birth. Lin Quen nodded to indicate that he now understood what was being said and where this strange man had come from. Lin said that now he understands why this man is so wrapped from head to toe, because he must stink terribly. The girls were outraged that Lin had gone back to his old ways. He did nothing to help, but only humiliated the opponent and angered him even more. The man shouted that Lin Kue was a good fellow, because he managed to get him out of himself and now the guys cannot even think about escaping. The guy used a formation attack. Several black rays flew away from him in different directions, similar to the tentacle with which he grabbed Mo King Cheng earlier. All the students started looking at the sky, not understanding what was happening. Everything turned purple. The man in the robe shouted, Snake Den. After that, all the purple rays flew towards the girls and Lin Kue. The guy indignantly asked why he was being attacked, because he was just passing by. Su Tan replied to him that he had called and humiliated a man. The man in the robe shouted that his snakes were everywhere and now his opponents would dance until they fell from powerlessness. Lin Kue called the Department of Superpowers and said that they had some kind of psycho here who talks to snakes, but there was no connection and he never got through. The man in the robe realized that his opponents did not expect such a turn but in fact everything was going according to his plan. In his formation, they were not just locked up, but also cut off from the outside world. Lin Kue started shooting a video with the words that today's highlight of the program is a psycho who strangles a boa constrictor. The man in the robe was very angry at such antics on the part of the guy. Lin laughed to himself and thought that the man wanted to exhaust them and now they will look. Who's who? Su Tang asked Lin out loud and with annoyance about why he was taking the man out. Suddenly a system window appeared. The first choice gave eight additional dexterity points and for him it was necessary to throw everyone and run away alone for help. For the second choice, it was necessary to betray the Kanglin Academy and join the forces of the afterlife abyss. As a reward for this, one pill of life was given, a medicinal remedy that removes any negative effect. And finally, the third choice gave eight fragments of the ability and for this it was necessary to lend a helping hand to the girls and fight with a member of the afterlife abyss. Lin Kue was glad that the system, as always, gave him a choice in time. However, Lin was upset that he would be able to make only one choice, because according to him, he could easily complete all three tasks, but only one reward is given. Lin decided that the pill of life was the best option right now. The man in the robe grabbed Mo King Cheng's leg with his tentacle and fell like that. Tian Yu asked her friend if she was alright, but before Mo could answer anything, a man in a robe shouted that she was his now and began to pull the girl to him. Suddenly, Su Tan appeared between her friends and the man in the robe. She stopped the attack and shouted that he would not be able to take any of the Kanglin students. The man in the robe asked about who would stop him, a girl in short shorts. He said this alluding to Su Tang. Suddenly, Lin Kui appeared behind the man's back. He praised the snake master for his good statements. The man in the robe looked at the guy in disbelief. The girls were surprised by such an outburst on the part of Lin. They were even outraged by the way he called the man. Lin approached the man in the robe even closer, bowed and offered his many apologies. He called the man a respected master and said that his words were rude and hoped that the man would forgive him. The man in the robe was surprised. Lin Kua bowed even deeper and said that in his eyes, the Kanglin Academy is a dump. The afterlife abyss is much cooler, so there is only one option left. Lin Kue promised to serve the man in the mantle faithfully. The guy said that every effort would be made on his part for the well-being of the organization. The girls looked at Lin with chagrin and anger. The man in the robe laughed and said that the one who understands the situation is wise. The man patted Lin Kue on the shoulder and said that since he was now a dog of the afterlife abyss, then let him bring Mo King Cheng to him. Lin said he would do it without any problems and he could rely on the guy. At that moment, a system window appeared that the task was completed and one life pill as a reward had already been added to the inventory. 
But suddenly Lin Kuei announced that he had one requirement. A man in a robe asked about what kind of requirement it was. In response, Lin Kuei used his flaming fist punch and attacked the robe man right in the stomach. At the same time, Lin Kuei shouted that he needed this man's death. The man in the robe flew away from the impact for a very long distance. The girls watching all this were extremely surprised by what was happening. Lin said that everything is so bad at the afterlife abyss that even a dog does not want to join them. Mo King Cheng realized that Lin Kuei was pretending in order to strike a sudden blow. Lin said that guys like him had nothing to do with villains and he would only join the Night Watch. Such words aroused admiration in Su Tang. The man in the robe angrily told Lin that he had done so in vain and pointed one of his tentacles at him from behind. Hong Yi shouted to her husband to be careful and warned about the attack from behind. The guy managed to dodge and realized that it was only thanks to his wife that he remained unharmed. The guy also noticed that the member of the afterlife abyss is quite strong, because even after Lin Kuei's fiery fist, this man was still safe and sound. The man shouted that if Lin could hide from his blow, then he could consider that he was still capable of something. Otherwise, Lin was finished. The man used the dark snake absorption attack and a huge black snake burst out of his palm. He flew towards Lin Kuei and was ready to bite the guy. But Lin used absolute protection in time and the snake's fangs crumbled on the dome of Lin's protective aura. The man in the robe was very surprised at this turn and watched Lin tear the snake apart with his hands. In response, the man shouted that he was about to make his murderous move. At that moment, Zhang Kian came running with Teacher Tang and her other students. Lin Kuo was very happy about the appearance of his friend and realized that he had run away to bring help. Teacher Tang asked about who was going to show the murderous movement here and said that she was looking forward to it. The man in the robe shouted that his formation could not be destroyed and asked the teacher about how they managed to enter. Teacher Tang replied that she played with such formations when the man was still walking under the table. The man laughed again and said that it didn't matter how they got here, because no one could resist his deadly movement, and began his snake attack. The snake opened its mouth and ate Teacher Tang with one bite. A member of the afterlife abyss laughed and said that the righteous warriors turned out to be just a herd of garbage. Suddenly, the snake's mouth exploded and Teacher Tang Lin came out of it. The man was surprised at what the woman had done to his snake. He asked how Teacher Tang did it, because there wasn't even a scratch left on her. The teacher used Zhu Yan's summoning technique and a beast appeared next to her. He began to spew flames from the underworld from his mouth. This fire burned the enemy and he fell to the ground without strength. Lin Kuei approached the teacher and said that her summoned animal looked like a cute monkey. At that moment, the animal slapped Lin and he said that it must be a female, because the animal is very angry. Zhang Kian told his friend that he was lucky that Zhu Yan didn't fry him. Summoned by the teacher, a mythical ancient beast using flame expands Tang Lin's capabilities and grants her fiery abilities. The teacher tied up a man in a robe and began to torture him with questions about who he was and how he ended up at the academy. The man shouted that he would rather die than tell anything. After that, Lin Kue and teacher Tang took the whips and began to unwind the man. Everyone watching this called them the demon duo. The man shouted that he would tell everything and began to talk about the main task of the afterlife abyss, but before he could finish, some girl appeared, stabbed her hand into his chest, which killed him. All the students and Tang Lin were very surprised. The girl had dark purple hair and horns that looked like sheep. Lin Kuei asked about who she was and noted that she had a very strong demonic aura. Teacher Tang immediately realized that she was facing the number one of the afterlife abyss, Onizi. The girl could not understand where this she-devil came from. But the demoness told the teacher and her students not to strain, because today she came only to kill Lin Kue. All the students were surprised at the speed with which the girl flew up to Lin and grabbed him by the shoulders. The demoness grabbed the guy by the hood and began to drag him along. Lin shouted for them to take Mo King Cheng away. No one managed to grab Lin Kue in time and he was sucked into the portal along with the demoness. The last thing Lin Kue managed to shout was why he was always extreme in any situation. Teacher Tang Lin told all the students to run after the demoness and Lin Kue. The she-devil and Lin Kue ended up on some mountain and the demoness threw the guy to the ground. He screamed for help. The girl replied that Lin could shout louder because they were alone on the mountain and no one would hear them anyway. Lin Kue stood up, rubbed the bruised place and was surprised that he was dragged up the mountain. Lin Kue wanted to hit the demoness with his flaming fist, but nothing happened. It's as if all the energy has disappeared in this place and there is nothing. Lin Kue was very surprised and did not understand why this happened. The demoness laughed and said that the guy could not resist, because she had already sealed his soul and spiritual world. Lin yelled, asking the demoness what she was going to do with him. 
he started joking that he wasn't selling his body and asked if Mo King Cheng wasn't the target of the afterlife abyss. The demoness came up to Lin in a tight and said that initially it was so, but the girl was secretly watching everything that was happening and Lin Kue with his ability Kai Yu turned out to be a more valuable test subject than that girl. Lin Kue was horrified when he heard the word test subject. Mentally, the guy thought about how the demoness found out about Kai Yu. At that moment in the spiritual world, Hong Yi was all in chains and could not get out and help her husband in any way, since the woman was able to seal Lin's spiritual world. Hong Yi just hoped that her husband was fine. Lin Kue thought about how this woman was able to figure out his potential. For everyone, Lin is an ordinary person, because his ability to Kai USSS rank has not yet been fully revealed. The demoness said that if Lin Kue was obedient and accepted the demonic blood, she would not only do nothing to Lin, but also reward him. At that moment, a system window appeared in front of Lin. For the first choice, 15 additional points to strength were given and for this it was necessary to refuse, because the blood was definitely poisoned. For the second choice, 5 fragments of the ability were given and for them it was necessary to meekly accept the conditions and be an obedient boy. And finally, for the third choice, 10 additional dexterity points were given, and for him it was necessary to stall for time and find an opportunity to escape. Lin Kue decided that 15 points to strength is a lot and therefore decided to choose the first option. Lin said he'd rather throw himself down than drink this thing. After he said these words, a system window appeared that he would receive 15 points of strength. The demoness said that in this case, she can only cripple him first, and then feed him with blood anyway. Anyway, Lin is just a test subject. After that, Lin Kue fell to his knees and said that he would voluntarily drink blood. The girl said that since the guy is so good, she will give him an additional reward. The demoness kissed him and threw the kiss past the crystal with blood. Hong Yi, who saw this, was furious but could not do anything. Lin Kue realized that he didn't feel any changes. At that moment, Teacher Tang appeared and the demoness escaped. Zhang Kian attacked his friend with questions about whether he was okay and whether he needed to be examined. The guy convinced everyone that he was fine. Teacher Tang decided not to continue chasing the demoness, because it is not known what she is really capable of. Returning home, the guy handed his sister a large bag of goodies. The sister asked Lin if he would eat, to which the brother replied that he was tired today and wanted to rest. As soon as Lin was in his room, he fell to the floor, because his whole body hurt and burned because of the blood. Hong Yi appeared next to her and started asking her husband if he was okay. The guy said he needed to take medicine but his spirit has weakened and he can't get the item out of the system. The wife said that apparently the demoness gave Lin Kue a potential catalyst to cultivate his strength, but now the guy's body is not ready for this. It remains only to merge yin and yang, male and female energy, distributing the load on two. Hong Yi undressed and asked Lin to be gentle with her. 